Groups and math language. When I describe to you what groups are, the properties of the set and the binary operations that uh, is applied on the elements of that set, I laid down the definition and the properties using math language, and I also wrote down the math sentence in math symbols, those properties and those definitions. And so I just feel that it would be nice if I can bring back the topic of math language. So I'm going to test you if you understand these math sentences which are written in math symbols. So analyze this sentence. So what do you think? What is this math sentence all about? What does it say? Does the sentence say all real numbers have a multiplicative inverse? Well, maybe because we have this symbol and that is the symbol for the inverse of an element. How about this? All real numbers not equal to zero has a multiplicative inverse. Well, it sounds right. It sounds right also because, because this means... This means a real number that is not equal to zero. All real number not equal to zero has exactly one multiplicative inverse in the set of real numbers. Well, it sounds like the sentence in letter B. For all real numbers, A divided by zero is undefined. So which do you think is the right choice? What is this saying? What is this math sentence saying? For any real number not equal to zero, or for any real number such that that number is not equal to zero, okay, there is, but look at that, pay attention to that one, okay? There is a unique element in R called the A inverse, or another way of putting it is, there is exactly one A inverse in the set of real numbers. That is the meaning of that. There is only one. There is exactly one A inverse in R such that A times A inverse is equal to 1. So this one is letter C. So this sentence is describing to you the existence of a unique a multiplicative inverse for any real number not equal to zero. How about this one? So what does the sentence say? So what is this sentence all about? Well, you already know what this means. For any real numbers A, B, and C, okay? Now pay attention to this. This is a logical symbol for implication. So this is like there is an antecedent and there is a consequence. So this is like an if-then statement. So how do you read it? And what is it all about? It is about the addition property of inequality. So for any real numbers A, B, and C, if A is less than B, then a plus C is less than B plus C. And that is what the addition property of inequality is all about. Analyze this sentence. So what do you think? What does it say? Okay, let's check letter A. For any pair of distinct real numbers, one is always greater than the other. Well, it doesn't look like it's the answer for this one because there is a real number C here. For any unequal pair of real numbers, there is another real number that is between them. It sounds right, sounds right. But let us check the other choices. For any real numbers A and B, there is exactly one real number C that is greater than A. It doesn't sound right. Okay, because where is B here? And we know, we know the symbol for there is exactly one. Okay, so the symbol for that is something like this. There exists and then your exclamation mark. So definitely letter C is not the choice. For any real numbers A and B such that A is not equal to B, there is a real number C. Okay, there is a real number C that is less than, that is less than B. 
How about that? The right choice here is letter B. It's letter B, okay? For any unequal pair of real numbers, that is the idea behind, the, behind this uh, sentence. There is another real number that is between A and B, okay? Or that is between those pair of numbers, of real numbers. So our choice here is letter B. For any unequal pair of real numbers, there is another real number that is between them. 